Welcome to the She is a Nourish Mom podcast, where we talk about all things self-care, motherhood, and faith for the Christian mom who wants to transition from worn out to winning as the mom and woman God called her to be. I'm your host, Dr. Latoya Wiggins, but please just call me Latoya. I just want to be your mommy friend and sister in Christ as I teach you how to no longer feel depleted, but how to develop healthy habits to be nourished, renewed, and rejuvenated with biblical principles that bring peace instead of self-pity. Now let's get nourished together. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the She is a Nourish Mom podcast. I am so excited, everyone, to have my special guest today, Mrs. Nicole Roan. She is a capacity coach, y'all, and pretty much capacity equals self-care. And we, we are going to talk a little bit more about that. So, Nicole, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you so much. You don't know. I'm so excited to be here, you know, to be talking about capacity and self-care. So, yeah, I'm just excited. <laughs> yeah. So, Nicole, go ahead and introduce yourself to our mamas out there. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Yes. Hey, mamas. I am Nicole Roan. I am a mom of three, a wife, a business owner. Really kind of got into this space about capacity because I was burnt out and in the hospital for a little bit of time because of, you know, me being burnt out. And so I'm just excited to be able to help everybody do this preventative work to, you know, practice self-care uh, in a way that works for them. So, yeah. Yes, I love that you said preventative work. <laughs> mm. That's actually one of my inspirations for becoming the self-care strategist because as a physical therapist, I teach people on the other end. Now, I, I can teach them preventative work, mm -hmm. but it's usually you're already getting them at their worst <laughs> or mm -hmm. once something already happens. And as a self-care strategist, even as a capacity coach, we get to help people prevent these things from occurring. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, if they do happen, we want to make sure that these things don't happen again. So I love what we do as coaches. So let's talk about self-care. So what does self-care mean to you? So for me, self-care really means doing the things that fill you up that take care of you right it's not just about going to go get a massage or getting you know a mani pedi although i subscribe to that right, right. <laughs> that care is literally about taking care of yourself from the inside out so getting the amount of sleep that you need making sure that the company that you keep whether that is you know of course in your household your significant other but the friends that you have the family that you give your energy to self-care is about taking care of you and prioritizing your needs so that you can show up and that you can do it in excellence and making sure that you're doing that on a consistent basis not something that you know i hear people say all the time self-care is a nice to have or you know it must be nice it's a luxury no ma'am it's a requirement right self-care is a requirement so that's how i feel about self-care yes i totally agree and i always say i mean i, I still say it and the you're like, oh, self-care is Saturday. But, you know, I make sure I tell my moms or people in general, self-care is every day. If you're on a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, if you practice the Sabbath, yes, you have your day of complete rest or doing things to fill you up a little bit more than normal. But we have to find ways to fill our cups up each and every day throughout mm -hmm. the day. <laughs> doing things that nourish us, those keep us calm combat the stress because the stress is going to come <laughs> life of life. <laughs> yeah, life but you know are we just going through the motions and not doing anything about it are we waiting to till the saturday or the yearly vacation just to get some rest or do something that fills us up we can't mm -hmm. do that nobody can live like that really you know so yeah. that takes us to capacity Mm -hmm. Tell our moms, what does capacity mean to you? And what, what do you do as a capacity coach? And then we're going to dive right onto your story of why this is so important to you. 
Okay, absolutely. So mama's capacity to me is really the amount of time, energy, and resources that you have available to do all the things in your personal and professional life. And it's about managing that in a way where you are no longer given from a deficit. And I love what you just said about how, you know, similar to you, I say self-care Saturday as well, but please believe it's an everyday choice, right? It's about understanding who you're giving your time and energy to. Is it aligned to what you say that you value? And are you showing up how you want to show up versus how you're being perceived of showing up, right? Because for me, I used to think that, oh, I'm doing all these great things as a mom because I'm working all this time and I'm making all this money and I'm giving all these things, you know, physical things. Yeah. My children because of what I'm doing, but I was sacrificing myself. What they really needed was me. They needed me to be there. And so capacity is about being intentional every single day and practicing self-care and filling yourself up so that you can give from your overflow. And, you know, a couple of the ways that I do that, like how you were just talking, I was thinking every day, listen, this is part of my self-care. Uh -huh. My matter is taking my vitamins every day. That's it's it's building in the time to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do so that you can show up and keep glowing up. Showing up and glowing up. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about your personal story of when you knew it was time to start prioritizing your capacity. Yeah. So you said something at the beginning, right? You know, being a physical therapist that you get to see people on the opposite end when they're at their worst. Yeah. And unfortunately, it took for me to be at my worst to realize that I needed to stop, that I needed to reprioritize. And I got to that space because I was working in a job. Now I'm from Chicago. So I was working and commuting two hours one way. Right. So four hours a day. Right. I'm commuting. So that was taking a toll on me. I was in a job that I did not like, like the company culture was toxic as all get out. So I'm dealing with that. At the same time, my marriage was falling apart because my husband was struggling from alcoholism and my daughter was significantly struggling from chronic migraines to the point where she missed her entire like freshman year. Mm -hmm. And so all of this is happening and every ounce of self-care was out the window. Right. <laughs> I was not taking care of myself. I was smiling and acting like everything was okay until my body one day was like, ma'am, no, you're not okay. Hmm. Right. And the long and short story is that it started with just some aches and pains and I wrote it off like nothing had, you know, happened, but it got so severe that I couldn't even get off the couch. Hmm. Like I was in tears. I couldn't get off the couch. My 15 year old daughter at the time had to help me get dressed and actually drive me to the hospital. Wow. And when I got there, they told me, you know, at first I thought I was crazy because I didn't want to go in there telling them people that everything in my body hurt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did because that's what was going on. And after running a couple of tests, the doctor said, we're rushing you to ICU. They mm -hmm. wouldn't even tell me why. But when I got there, they said that my CPK level, which is what really measures the amount of protein that's in your blood, mm. was at 200,000. And so if you know anything about CPK, the normal level is 200. And so because of that, my heart was shutting down. Mm. Or not my heart, my kidneys were shutting down. My uh -huh. heart was enlarged. There was just a lot that was happening. And so they couldn't physically find a reason, but there was this one doctor and I will forever remember her. She came and she sat on my bed, put her hand on my leg, didn't know her from a hole in the wall. <laughs> and she said, whatever you're dealing with, you know, mentally and emotionally is manifesting physically. So you are going to have to reprioritize and make some changes. First thing out of my mouth was, but I got to go to work. And she was like, <laughs> And I've heard, I've heard, I've had patients who have said that, like I said, in the ICU, had a stroke, whatever, you can't even move, but you're talking about going to work. <laughs> right. And in that moment, she was like, didn't you say that you're a mom? Like you can't even walk because I, I was bedridden with fluids being flushed through me. Anytime that I got up to move, my CPK shot up. So that compromised you know, my life. And so in that moment, I prayed like we all do when, you know, when stuff gets real and I asked God to save me, to help me to get to the root of what was going on and that I would do whatever he told me to do. Mm -hmm. 
little did I know that that was going to mean separating from my husband. I didn't know that it was going to mean, you know, leaving that stressful job. But I vowed that if I was healed, that I would help every woman I came into contact with to understand how our capacity. So all of my capacity was being taken up by that toxic job, that commute, the stress from the marriage and all the other things. And I pretended like everything was okay. And, I, you know, you sprinkle on lack of self-care on top of that and you got the perfect storm. So that's you know, the, the very short condensed version of what led me into this space. And now I get to help everybody understand how to do that preventative work in the form of self-care by recognizing and understanding what their capacity really is. Yes. And tell us a little bit about Flourish and Flow. You got some different flows <laughs> that help our moms or women in general, <laughs> that help them in- increase and improve, prioritize their capacity. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I believe that all five of these different areas of flow work together to make sure we have capacity. And so the first one is our heart flow. And that really is about the people that pull on your heartstrings, right? Your values, your boundaries, those sorts of things. And when you have something that's off in that area, it's going to show up in the other areas. So bringing awareness to what's what's really going on in my heart. What do I want? What do I need? Do, you know, what I say that I value, value in my time, value in my family, do my actions match that? So bringing awareness to that. And then we have our workflow, which of course is, yes, how we work, how we make money, but it's also about your level of fulfillment. Again, because I was working in that toxic role. I was making top dollar, but it was stressing me out. So (laughs) it really didn't matter. So we're looking about or thinking about the fulfillment and the balance that you're able to have between all the other hats that you wear. And if you're an entrepreneur, being able to grow, right? So really focusing on that work pillar. And then we have your health flow. And to me, this is, of course, the most significant because it's your mental, physical, and emotional health. And again, when something is off in one of those areas, it's going to going to show up because I said how I was struggling at home, you know, with the relationship with my husband that showed up in how I felt about work, but then it also showed up physically making me sat down somewhere in ICU. So focusing on those, and then you have your cash flow. So that is all about your money, your mindset, you know, how you manage it. You know, part of my story is that because of the things that were happening at home and at work, I was spending all that money I was making as fast as I could get it Mm. to try to feel fulfilled. So really paying attention to that. And then Mm. last but not least, our faith flow. And this is about your foundation and functioning. So when things start to go crazy, where do you turn to? How do you fill yourself up? And how do you, you know, keep moving despite what's going on? So I know that was very, very fast, but all five of those pillars of flow really work together to make sure that you have the capacity to show up and do what you need to do as a mom on top of all the other hats that you wear. Yeah. So mamas, as you see, we have to make sure we are truly nourishing ourselves in every area of our lives it truly does impact another whether it's something positive or negative when you're flourishing like flourishing flow when you're flourishing in each one of these areas it's going to flow in another area if Mm -hmm. you're neglecting those different areas it's going to affect everything else negatively and i love that you mentioned the, the faith flow that brings me to faith how has faith impacted the way that you take care of yourself, the way you take care of your family, those things that have, how has it impacted your ability to prioritize your capacity and thrive in motherhood and all those different areas of your life? Yeah, it's been everything. It has absolutely been my foundation because, you know, laying in that hospital after about a week and I was able to be, you know, moved from ICU to like the regular part of the hospital. Mm -hmm. I tried God. I was like, okay, let me bust open my laptop and see what I've been missing. (laughs) And And I got up to walk and my CPK shot back up. Mm. He was like, didn't I tell you to sit down? (laughs) down." And so I had to listen. It gives me goosebumps. I had to listen to what he was telling me from within to take care of myself. Because if I don't take care of me, I can't take care of anybody else, then I won't be able to fulfill, you know, my purpose. I won't be able to show my children how to do that. I won't be able to go out here and change the world. And so I had to lean heavily on God and my faith to give me 
the strength, the energy, the courage, the confidence to really show up and do the things that I'm doing. And a big part of that, you know, after I changed jobs, I did find something that was closer to shorten that commute. But mm-hmm. God was still like, hey, chick, this ain't it. I, th- you think this is it? You have some other work that you need to do. So I stepped out on faith and I stepped away from my cushy six figure HR role. <laughs> And, you know, started this business three years ago, and it's been nothing but faith and obedience that has allowed me to grow my platform, you know, to even coach with our coach, Coach Patrice Washington, and to be out here doing these things and teaching about capacity. So faith has been the cornerstone of me being able to really take care of myself, to know that it's okay to take a break and know that God is going to provide And to be the walking example of what that looks like to encourage all of the mamas out here that, hey, like you got to pay attention and take care of yourself if you want to, you know, really lead by example for your children and set them up for success. They got to see you do it first. Yes. Lead by example. So I know you did mention what you did as far as work, (laughs) you know, (laughs) how you uh, had to change that up to improve your capacity. What are some other things that you have done or even that you're currently doing that helps you to fill up your cup, you know, each and every day or just in general and the impact you've seen and, you know, your marriage, your children, you know, parenting and even your your business? Yeah. So, so many things come to mind, but two of the things that pop up and stand out are, excuse me, planning my time and mm-hmm. setting boundaries. Planning my time is something that I do on a regular basis. So part of my self-care routine is on either Saturdays or Sundays. I give myself a little flexibility. I sit down and I map out all the things that I need to do based on the different hats that I wear. Mom, Mm -hmm. wife, big sister, business owner, woman of God, right? And then as I'm mapping them out, I'm putting them in my calendar Mm -hmm. based on what's essential, not just important. Because if I don't do that, then I'm letting time get the best of me. And then I'm Mm -hmm. scrambled in my brain, my mental capacity is taxed and I can't, you know, function. Another thing that I do is to set boundaries, not just with other people, but with myself. Mm -hmm. So one thing, you know, I've recently gotten back into the gym over the last month. And so setting the boundary and expectation with myself that, girl, you got to go to bed. If you know you need to get up (laughs) early and go to the gym, don't you be scrolling on TikTok at 10, 11 o'clock at night. (laughs) Because you know, you know I'm telling the truth, right? Guilty. <laughs> no. the guilty and working on it. <laughs> and it's not, you know, I'm not perfect, but I yeah. catch myself. So little things like that. So making sure that I'm setting boundaries with myself about going to bed, but also communicating that to the people around me. You know, my my daughter, my sister, and my son think I'm their personal Uber driver. And so I have to say, look, I got a workout class scheduled at this time. So what I'm not going to do is this. Of course, it's a little nicer than that, right? <laughs> but really communicating, hey, these are what my priorities are for me. If you need me, I'm available, such and such. And sometimes they laugh. They're like, oh, so we got to get on your calendar? Yeah, you do. Yes. <laughs> because this is what helps me manage my capacity. Right. Uh, and so I think aside from that, really just understanding what fills me up and what takes away from me. And so Mm -hmm. I do my best to not, you know, participate in whether it's conversations where people are gossiping and, you know, not talking about stuff that's not filling me up to making sure that I'm surrounding myself with women like yourself, you know, and other people that are part of my, my circle, my sister circle, my sister friends, because when you give and you give and you give, you got to be around some people that are just going to give like you and you soak it up. Yeah. So I think that was three things, but that's what I do. <laughs> so <laughs> That was wonderful. I was thinking about you recently. So I've been trying to find more Christian content and stuff to follow on social media. And mm-hmm. I found this lady, her Instagram name is Just Whit- Witty. I think her mm-hmm. name is actually Whitney. And her videos are funny. She's a comedian. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Nicole, so she did this video a few days ago and it was about capacity. So she hopped in the car and her friend started talking about all this like bad stuff was going on in her life. Like her boyfriend was cheating on her. But when Mm -hmm. she said it, like, I don't have the capacity. So everything (laughs) she did, she went to a friend's house, overheard another toxic conversation and was like, I don't have the capacity. And then she left out. And it was like, it was the things we deal with, you know. Our friends or loved ones can come to us 
and you want to help them with their issues, but sometimes we truly just don't have the capacity. You know, if I sit here, <laughs> right, if I sit here and let you pour on to me, then I, you know, and, and I'm not in a place to receive, then you're going to bring me down more. So, you know, it's not always saying that, you know, you should, oh, you shouldn't even be there for your friends. Your friends want to vent, blah, blah, blah. You know, but sometimes you have to let them know, <laughs> I don't have the capacity right now. <laughs> I got <laughs> a whole conversation. conversation. <laughs> the way my capacity is set up, because right. it's the truth. It's exactly what you're saying. And, you know, we have to be able to communicate. Like, I don't have the capacity for that. Not today. I right. might need it. I don't have it today. Not right. try me tomorrow, next week. I can't today. <laughs> uh-huh. She even asks, like at the end, it was like, is that something I can? Is, can, can I pray? Can I pray for you about something? You know, <laughs> and it's so true because you know, like if I'm already feeling like I'm about to hit rock bottom, or I might be rock bottom, and then you load more onto me. <laughs> We both gonna be down in the dump. We're gonna put a hole in my cup. Right. We can't get each other because we both down. <laughs> so yeah, I was cracking up. And she actually has a t-shirt because I thought since the video was new, I didn't realize I got this stuff that she's been doing for a while. And she actually mm-hmm. had a, a hoodie. And I think it said I don't have a capacity. I know capacity was on it, but I think she said I don't mm-hmm. have a capacity. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to tag Nicole in this. <laughs> tag me, tag me, tag me. Yeah, but it was so funny and so realistic because a lot of times, yeah, we we have to learn to set boundaries and you just learn how to do it with love. Mm-hmm. When it can be hard, some people they will receive it, some people may not, but you have to protect your own capacity. Or mm-hmm. you know, you said I can't help anybody if I'm in a hospital or worse. So you got no. to protect yourself, ladies. It's it can be hard getting started, you know, prioritizing yourself, but it gets easier. <laughs> you take mm-hmm. those baby steps, and that takes us to our, uh, you know, the last thing I want to discuss. I know you talked about some different ways that you have prioritized your capacity. What are some tips or great tip for a mom who is struggling with prioritizing self-care and increasing her capacity? What's some easy steps or the number one step, whatever you want to call it, that you think is important for her to do just to get started? Yeah. So for me, this step really is about, it's pausing and it is, it's taking your own advice. I know that that sounds easier said than done, but when I get stuck and I get overwhelmed, I literally say out loud to myself, what would I tell my best friend to do? What would I tell my daughter to do? What am I constantly telling other people to do? And nine times, 10 times out of 10, (laughs) it's doing that thing, right? It's, hey, take a second, give yourself some grace, write out what you need to do. But I think it starts with the mindset of, really giving ourselves the same grace that we give everybody else and then Mm -hmm. taking that advice because when you're overwhelmed and you have a billion things you know running through your brain you got twenty two thousand things on your to-do list you don't know where to start it's pausing and saying all right you get yourself centered what would i tell my best friend to do what would i tell my child to do i need to do that because that's what it is does that make sense that makes perfect sense because <laughs> we are great <laughs> at giving other people advice. <laughs> we are terrible with taking our own advice. So what you just said, just pausing and asking myself what I would tell somebody else. Oh, you gave yourself the best advice. <laughs> I'm not giving you all this great advice. Let me take it. My like, girl, that's real good. I need to apply that. But yeah, it's that it's the pause for me. It's to pause and really like you know, take a deep breath. What would I tell somebody that I love to do if they were in this situation? And sometimes it's easier for us as women, especially as moms, to look outside of ourselves. But if you take that and you look that in the mirror and you do it, then it's going to help you to just get started, to take one small step, whether that's setting your bedtime, whether it's drinking your water, right? Whether it is, you know, taking a sick day that you need to take or moving some meetings around, you pausing long enough to have one singular thought versus 55 of them running around is going to help you to figure out what your next best step is. Yes. I love that. Just that, like you said, that pause and that pause is everything. I always tell my, I always tell other people, you know, like I'm not perfect, 
but I'm better at checking myself. Right. <laughs> and to check yourself, it comes with that pause. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling frazzled. Let me just stop. <laughs> Take a mm-hmm. moment. Why do I feel this way? You oh, can ask my kids. They me in the middle of the day. Right. <laughs> my, my son, he's eight. He's like, Mom, are you at max capacity right now? <laughs> <laughs> Are you taking a pause? Yes, baby, I'm taking a pause. I'll come back in five minutes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> did you hear the? Did you just hear what she said, Mamas? She's been doing this for so long that her child has recognized this, and that's why we had to prioritize self care because our kids see it. Mm-hmm. So her own child was able to ask her what her capacity was. Are you at max capacity? And I pretty much told her to chill. <laughs> I heard another mom say something similar and it wasn't capacity, but it, you know, mom needs her space right now. Let, let me give her some space. Let her right. chill out. <laughs> I wish I could remember the term that she used, but it was similar to capacity, but they recognized it. Like, okay, mom, mm-hmm. this needs some time. Let me roll back up out this door. And you know, I know it's not going to always be um, easy, mom. It's like, depending on your child's age, <laughs> They're not going to always understand it, but you still mm-hmm. teach them why they're growing up and they will pick up on it. <laughs> they will. They will. Yeah. yeah. So mamas, remember to pause <laughs> and evaluate what's most important in that moment, in that day, <laughs> even if it's a whole week. Like she said, you have to rearrange some things, mm-hmm. take a sick day out, like to call it a mental health day. <laughs> That's the sick day. <laughs> A lot of times we think about our physical illness. I mean, not physical illness, but symptoms, you know, like, oh, i am got the flu or stomach ache or whatever. If you're not feeling good up in your head, your heart, guess what? That manifests as an illness also. So take the sick day. Yeah. Yeah, take your mental <laughs> take health day. day. Uh-huh. Like, look, you're not even lying. I used to feel like I was lying until I thought about it. Even years later, oh, I wasn't lying. I really, I did not feel well. I didn't feel good. I could, I could not function. Even if it's for exactly. you to just not have to deal with the people that you work with, if it's to pause from life for a second, so you can get your stuff together. Exactly. That that day is okay, and mm-hmm. I give myself permission to do that as well. <laughs> go back to work, refresh, or whatever activity is. You go back, refresh, and you're actually able to perform at a better capacity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that part. Girl. <laughs> so Nicole, tell our mamas how they can stay in contact with you if you have anything coming up, anything you want them to check out so they can start improving their capacity. Absolutely. So of course I have the free capacity calculator. And so that's where you can go on and check your capacity. Cause what I find is that we often think we have more of it than we do until you realize like, oh dang, wait a minute. So I definitely have that. I also have the flow and flourish toolkit which is a bundled package it has like it's a 30 page workbook with some checklists and over 15 different self-paced videos where i'm talking about boundaries healthy relationships how to implement self-care work-life balance how to create capacity so it's like the the superstore of getting your capacity together so those are the two things that i have definitely have some speaking engagements and things coming up but no specific dates yet so i'll 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 give that to you at a later date, but stay tuned. Follow me on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. It's at Nicole Roan. And I just, I thank you, Miss Dr. Latoya Wiggins, for allowing me to be on this platform and pour into the mamas because we need it because we always got capacity issues. <laughs> so- uh-huh. <laughs> And yes, I thank you for your time here. I thank you for pouring into our moms. I thank you for pouring into me because, like I said, it's always easier for us to help other people. Sometimes we need to be checked too. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> and now I got some, you know, some tips I need to do from, you know, having that pause a little bit more, especially this week. My week has been a little crazy. I've been having to check myself more. And I just love just the simplicity, just pausing, just pause. Let's go ahead. Mm-hmm. All right. We got go back to the basics. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mama. So we are going to go ahead and close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this conversation today. I thank you for allowing Nicole and I to connect and having her pour into our mamas who are listening today. I pray that you will bless Nicole, myself, and all the mamas who are listening in. I pray that you will lead us and guide us 
on how to nourish ourselves, how to nourish ourselves in the way that you want us to nourish ourselves. Teach us, lead us and guide us on how to improve our capacity and have the capacity to do the things that you want us to do in every area of our life for ourselves, for our children, for our marriages or our significant others, if we're dating, our friendships, our businesses, our careers, in every area of our life, allow us to have the capacity to pour into others without feeling depleted. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo, come on, prayer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mamas. You all have a blessed week, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the She is the Nourish Mom podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and share with a mommy friend who needs to hear this message. Connect with me on social media at She is a Nourished Mom. And let me know your ahas and takeaways from this week's episode. Until next time, keep nourishing yourself, mama.